worthy. And so I'm going to ask if that, is that okay with everybody? Does anybody have a problem with that or being videotaped? Um, I, on Wednesday, I have a three hour meeting with the Methodist group of people in their committee to either send me forward for ordination or send me home. Oh <laughs> so um, this is a part of that. And so that's why we're taping it today. So thanks for bearing with me. It's also why I have most of this written out and not memorizing. So today I decided, because it was Thanksgiving, um, to talk a little bit about what I was really thankful for, which happens to be a lot of things. But one of the things that I'm most thankful for is my dog, Smitty, who is my ministry partner. So did you realize that the word dog in our language is God spelled backwards? You guys know that? <laughs> so I think that's pretty cool. And personally, I don't really think that God minds that our word for him is the same as for dog. Um, nor do I think that it's a coincidence, because in fact, I really think it's a God incidence, because I don't believe in coincidences. And Spitty and I have been really busy this Thanksgiving, um, and, I, and all last week, and I, despite a really busy week, I saw God's fingerprints all over it. So what I'm going to talk to you today about is my week and the fingerprints that I saw. The reason I'm doing that is because I realize there's so many different ways that God speaks to us through the Spirit. And what I notice the most is that he seems to do it when I'm not able to pay attention. Somehow he gets my attention. So this is a talk about getting attention. So my week began pretty frantically because I was writing papers for this meeting I was telling you about on Wednesday. And I was really anxious because I was worried about Thanksgiving, worried about getting the papers done, worried about all kinds of stuff. And then um, I decided, okay, I should really try and pray because that's what you do when you're really anxious. At least that's what I'm supposed to do. Um, so I tried really hard, but I found I couldn't do it. And I thought, well, this is silly. Here I am going before this committee next week and I can't even pray. So I tried hard, but I couldn't. And I found the passage from Romans 8.26, which is the passage for today, going through my head. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And boy, was I groaning. So as I was sitting there trying to type my papers at the table, my four-legged ministry companion nudged me on my knee. And I, I was like, okay, go away, I gotta do this. And then he shot me with his nose. And I said, no, go away, I gotta do this. So then he climbs up into my lap, in between the table and the computer, and me. And I said, you know, I'm really getting mad here because I gotta get this paper done. So what happened was, I said, okay, go away, go lie down, and he did. And I'm typing away, and about 30 seconds later, I, I, what I did is I moved forward in my chair so that he couldn't climb up in front of me. So about 30 seconds later, I feel him behind me, and darned if he didn't climb up behind me on the chair, all 70 pounds of him, and sat on the chair behind me. And that got my attention. And I started laughing, and I thought, okay, there's a message for this, this here that I'm not hearing. And sure enough, you know, as I thought about it more, I figured it, I figured it out, and I thought, you know what? I was remember another verse went through my head from Philippians and it says do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God so God had really heard me even though I really couldn't express it God had heard that I really needed a break here so as I finally started laughing I started remembering that God meets us where we are no matter where that is it can be in a really hard spot, but God meets us exactly where we are. And I know I'm not the only one that has trouble reaching for God sometimes, um, but it isn't something that we generally like to admit. Smitty helped me remember that God's always with us and ready to meet us. Yeah. And I think he reminds other people about that too. So 
in his own way, without words, he's able to communicate the most important thing that God wants us to know, and that's how to be loved and know how to love. And that is really what it means to be a minister, right? To communicate God's love. That's really it. Every single one of us here is a minister to, to each other every Sunday that we're here, every Sunday afternoon that we show up. It means we're here in this moment to celebrate just being together as children of God. So this was another lesson I learned from Smitty. He's really just happy to be here. He looks pretty darn happy to me. Um, it means that, you know, that when, and I don't see him today, but when Bill comes, and when Randy comes, and when Joe comes, and when all of you come, Smitty gets really excited, and he wags his tail, and he's so happy to see each and every one of you. He knows each and every one of you because he's formed a relationship with you, and that's a relationship based on love, just absolute, unconditional love. He, he doesn't see physical disability. He could care less about how you dress or where you sleep. He doesn't judge. He just loves completely and unconditionally just like God does. So I'm gonna share one more story with you. My friend Jerry is dying. She's one of the very first people who, um, who I got to know as a nurse practitioner where I work, because I take care of cancer patients, and she had cancer. Um, I've known her for over 10 years, and she just moved out of her apartment into a nursing home because she didn't have anyone really to take care of her um, and has found that this has been a really hard thing. Now Jerry has not been able, um, or Jerry's given up a lot of things over many years. She's not been able to really speak clearly without a tongue since her surgery 10 years ago. So people can't understand her very well. Um, she's given up her independence. She had to put her cat down when she came into the the nursing home so she's she is really struggling but Jerry is one of those people who is absolutely full of the spirit and of faith and she has taught me so much by being able to be with her <clears throat> when she got her a second lung cancer she decided enough was enough and decided you know she didn't she decided okay I'm not gonna treat it and so she hasn't She's loved deeply in the community for her generosity, out of near poverty for fundraising, any cause she can find, and she does it by hula hooping. Now she's about 90 pounds now, and looks like this little tiny sparrow, but she can hula hoop for hours, and has raised a ton of money doing it. So Smitty and I went to see Jerry last Friday night, and her room is full of all kinds of pictures of all these people she had to say goodbye to. And what I was realizing was I had to say goodbye to her as well. And, and she to me. And Jerry, as tough as she is, she didn't want to say goodbye. She didn't want to get all emotional about it. And as tough as I am, I didn't really want to do it either. And so we're talking and we're laughing, kind of cracking jokes. And both of us were sort of refusing to get emotional about this. But Smitty knows how to say goodbye because I brought him with me. And what he did, he basically, you know, since the minute we walked into the nursing home, he didn't let her out of his sight, which was remarkable because he'd not met her before. And as Jerry and I were sitting down talking, he leaned up against her and he just stood there leaning against her. And we're talking a little bit more and then he started licking her ankle and he just laid down at Jer on Jerry's feet, literally, as her feet were on the floor. Now, Jerry, um, Smitty and Jerry had just met, okay? Um, I looked at Jerry and I was really surprised. I said, you know, you realize that he doesn't do this to anyone outside the family. And she looked at me and she said, and her eyes started filling with tears. And she said, he knows, doesn't he? And I said to her, yeah, I think he does. And in that moment that Smitty and God created, both Jerry and I could acknowledge feeling sad about having to part. As I watched Smitty lying at her feet, I was reminded of Mary washing the feet of Jesus, the only one who would acknowledge what was about to happen to him. And it made me think about the human side of Jesus. 
how he must have been both touched and sad at Mary's act. The human side of him couldn't have wanted to walk into what was to come, but he trusted God. And God never let him down. He was with Jesus until his death, and then he went one step further, and he raised him from that death. When I saw last Friday night was a woman who trusted God completely. She, sure, she could be unsure, she could be afraid, she could be sad, but she trusted God with all her heart and all her soul. She knew God was with her and he wasn't going to let her out of his sight. So Smitty and I had a big week with God. I was reminded that it was okay for life to be chaotic and even though I couldn't pray my way out of it, God would help me find a path back to relationship with him. And that God doesn't really see the outside of a person and all those things that, that we don't want to show. But he never lost sight of the love that, that is on the inside of us because he put it there. And finally, God and Smitty reminded me of how that relationship was forever, that relationship between God and us, and between, between God and each and every one of you, between God and I. Even when we get to the point when we're gonna go beyond this life, God's not gonna let us go, not for, so, not for one single second, and no matter what. And that's all I have to say. Amen.